So this is the uh, Northampton Conservation Commission meeting for the 9th of April, 2015. I'll read the standard opening meeting statement. This is uh, a commission of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management but primarily focus on carrying out provisions of the Wetlands Act and Northampton Wetlands Ordinance. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meetings, dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask that the public limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Uh, today we have uh, a continuation of the request for determination of applicability the determinative installation of a solar array within the riverfront and flood plain is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, that on River Bank Road, and a notice of intent uh, for construction of a residential building addition and associated site work, including a new parking area, drainage improvements, uh, and point source stormwater discharge work uh, to take place in the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands uh, with this at Coles Meadow Road. Uh, we will also consider uh, the uh, exchange, purchase, or lease of real property um, and a review of mail. First item is a uh, an approval of the minutes. I see the uh, February 26 minutes listed on the agenda. Sarah, but didn't you send out two different sets of minutes? I did. There, there was a January that we put off from last time as well as February. Okay, so what, what was the date in January? Eighth. Eighth. Okay, so I want to take that one first. Uh, do I hear a motion to approval of the minutes of January 8th? Is there a second? Second. Any modifications, amendments? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. And for the minutes of February 26th, is there a motion to approve? Second. 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 Any amendments to that? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. First item, uh, continuation of a request for determination of applicability to determine if installation of a solar array within the riverfront area and floodplain of the Connecticut River is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Applicant Jesse Lang with the bank road. Is the applicant represented? If not, I sent out the supplemental information with the applicant that I provided and mm -hmm. right. well under the right. I, I, cubic yard. Saw that, that it's a uh, Something like half a cubic yard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they did provide, even though they didn't attend a uh, hearing, they did provide the necessary documentation that we were looking for. Okay. And, and had they, they did have representatives at prior hearings, they should representatives just didn't have uh, this data with them. And that's actually under what the commission has already voted as the minimus. So they wouldn't have been able to apply. Okay. So that's a begin with. So Pretty straightforward. Okay. So in this case, um, we should, uh, well, actually, first, so first we can now finally close the hearing. Close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and uh, staff recommendation that this was indeed de minimis and therefore uh, we can issue a negative determination indicating that the work is within a resource area but will not create an alter alteration uh, because it's less than the amount that we have established as the minimum standard for constituting an alteration. So you want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. So, moving uh, uh, and seconding staff recommendation. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. So now we're also at 535, so we can take the next item. Notice of intent for construction of a residential building addition and associated site work, including new parking area, drainage improvements, and a new point source stormwater discharge. Uh, work to take place in the buffer zone to board and investigate wetlands. Uh, applicant is Deaconess, Abundant Life Communities, address 25 and 37, Coles Meadow Road. Is
Uh, my name is Chesty Marino. I'm an engineer at Portera Design Group, and I'm representing uh, Deaconess Abundant Life Communities. Uh, just a little order of business here before we get going. I have the proof of mailings here. So we're here for the Rockridge uh, Residential Care Community. Um, these folks have uh, provided assistant living care um, in, in the community here since 1971. Uh, the, the existing site up there has about 100 units, um, and uh, they're looking to permit some minor work in the buffer zone to support a three-story addition uh, to their site. So the project is located um, 5 and 10 North King Street at the intersection of uh, Coles Meadow Road in North King Street across from the State Police Barracks. Uh, Laurel Park is up in this area here. Site's an 11 and a half acre property. Um, most of the developments on the southern half, uh, it contains a, a area of wetland here located uh, towards the northern part. Um, this was reflagged in November of this year uh, to support uh, the addition to this new community. To build a little scale of the project, um, this is a three-story addition that they're looking to build. Um, so it's an addition to this uh, existing facility um, and it would be located on the southern corner. Again, uh, north is in this direction um, towards me. Uh, the wetlands are located to the on the north end of the site. Um, the existing buildings and cottages are located here. We're down at the southern corner here where we're proposing this uh, 31,500 square foot addition. is a little zoomed in from the one uh, that we we're just looking at. Again, the existing brick building is here on North King Streets along here. State Police Barracks are down in the corner. Um, the, the new addition is located here. It's L-shaped. Connects the uh, existing brick portion of the building with the uh, existing cottage in the front. Um, we're also proposing access to this, um, utilizing the existing service drive. Um, so that was one of the good things we could do here is um, we determined that this, the existing service drive here was underutilized and we could reuse that curb cut and provide uh, 25 spaces in this area uh, to support the addition. Um, most all of the work is located outside the buffer. Uh, there's no direct impacts, very low low impact here you can see here um, this is the location of the wetlands uh, we have the 50 foot and the 100 foot and um, our work is between the 50 and the 100. Now um, I did want to give you some revised plans uh, we were able to pull the original filing had some work between the, the 0 and the 50 foot when we went to uh, our folks at uh, planning they required us to uh, narrow up the existing entrance drive here. Uh, they felt the, the, the width that we had 24 feet was too wide, narrowed it up. That allowed us to reduce impacts even further and pull the point source out of the 50. So that is a, uh, a good result as far as conservation is concerned. So I just had some revised plans uh, that, that show that. Overall disturbance is down about 300 uh, square feet. Do you want me to hand them out to you folks? really hard to tell what the changes are, not much, but um, I think it's important that we were able to kind of pull it out of the 50 there. So 
Sorry, Sarah, it looks like I'm one short there. That's the, <laughs> so that plan that you're looking in front of you here is basically the one I'm, I'm talking about now. Um, it, re it resulted in about 300 square feet less of impact, but more importantly, we were able to pull our point source out. There's two. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's two. Yeah. Uh, one's actually a plan that was in the plan set that we've updated, and the other was a um, was in the notice of intent as an exhibit. So I felt we should update update both. Um, the, the, the plans that you had sent uh, originally didn't have a 50 foot demarcation. They didn't, and uh, but that the actual. Uh, uh, it was in it. What did, that did intrude? Okay. Yeah, what I realized is we didn't have that. I put in the notice of intent themselves an exhibit that had the 50 on it to meet all your requirements. Okay. And then I felt when we updated it here, I, I showed that so that it's good. I didn't catch that. I used the PDF, which uh, didn't have that. Again, um, you know, it's buffer disturbance, no direct button and impacts. Um, we have our file number from Tim McKenna, DEP. We didn't have any comments. We did receive our planning board approval. We do have our stormwater pit, our permit from DPW, and our permits from MassDOT. Um, so we're all set there. As far as uh, utilities, um, there's a series of direct and uh, wet and dry utilities that are proposed to uh, service the addition. Uh, also, we have a new drainage system. If if any of you folks are around in 2003, when the first edition was happened, uh, there was a pretty extensive drainage system in the back here, but it's actually higher, a little bit higher than we are. So we really couldn't get around to that. So what we did in this front area here, um, we have um, some underground uh, detention systems with infiltration. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to infiltrate the roof runoff and portions of the parking, the new parking area. Um, 19 of the 25 spaces, we also proposed uh, pervious pavement, um, uh, so that's, that's a bonus as well. Uh, and we do have an excess of 80% uh, total suspended silage removal. Um, as was stated, um, just because of the elevations here, we really couldn't get around the corner of the existing outfall that's up here. Um, so one of the things we needed to do was to create this, this new outfall here. Uh, one of the benefits of that though is uh, now we're uh, treating most of the service drive that previously wasn't before, so that's, that's a little bit of a benefit. Um, sites not in an ACC, a critical area, no riverfront, no floodplain, and uh, we're outside of habitat. Um, we do have erosion control um, at the limit of work, and uh, except for the, the outfall here, there's just a little portion of grading in here, and uh, for to support the uh, dumpster pad and a little bit of the parking area so it's a pretty simple project um, I think it's got some benefits and and this as far as uh, uh, your bylaw and the wetlands protection act are concerned majority of this stuff is outside of uh, jurisdiction I think it's good did you have a proposal about five years ago or it seems like it was another 2003 yeah there was 2003 a little more than five years ago yeah 2003 and 2005 that's um, Basically, well, there was two. Yeah, there was so there was one in 2003, and that resulted in what you see here. So the original building was this here, and then the addition was this. This is the later one I remember. The later one was down in the corner. It was uh, separate cottage units, and that was about 2007, 2008. Yeah. Um, that uh, was never constructed. Correct. Yeah, and, um, by there, never saw yeah, it. No. yeah. I, I think it. Um, my understanding, you, you might be better answering, but I think the dynamics of what uh, you know elderly folks were looking for changed a little bit, and right. so they got to this uh, this current scenario. Yeah, yeah, it a, yeah, in 2006, 2007. Um, Do your name, please? Sure, thank you, sorry. Uh, Beth Vichore, I'm the executive director at Rock Roche. Um, so, yeah, 2006, 7, 8, we were uh, marketing, looking to build the cottages, um, and then we had actually the, the recession mm -hmm. that, that hit, and we, we shelved that, and then doing the trends and the analysis, looking at the market, we um, came this vision of the pilots crossing in the, in the first floor garden neighborhood. <laughs> is what really is, is needed out there. 
so that's what you're remembering. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, the later one. Though. Yes. Although I was around for the first one. Yes. <laughs> This also has some advantages over that last one. Um, if I understand correctly, the memory support folks can now move into this new uh, building on the first floor, right? Um, and um, with better views and and it can really service them better. So, what is the memory support? <laughs> yeah. The um, what we're currently offering on our campus, we have a memory support assisted living community for ladies and gentlemen with different forms of dementia. Oh, and okay. so it's on the third floor currently, and, and to have it on the first floor with external access, having a nice outside courtyard, I mean, it's really primarily what you want to be able to provide, um, again, for these people. And so that's what this new building will allow, and a market rate independent rental community that's far more affordable than even some of our other components on our campus um, for the second and third floor by its crossing. So, yeah, so we're very excited. Other questions from the commission? What are the existing conditions of the, the areas where disturbance is proposed within the buffer zone? Um, so the service entrance is here. Um, the portions now, um, we're trying to reuse the areas that are, are gravel and, and um, primarily uh, Primarily areas that are uh, that that are um, grass now. Um, we do have a little bit of clearing, and that's to get our outfall out. Um, but we're trying to miss these larger trees in here. It's mostly smaller stuff here. Outside the buffer, um, there's trees here. The planning board's asked us to try to keep as many of those as we can. And with siting the building down in this corner and the parking lot in these, this area here, we're able to save a lot of that. But the, the dumpster pad is currently vegetated? No, right now there is no dumpster pad. The dumpster sits in the grass, so I think this will be a lot better. So mm -hmm. um, there is a dumpster area here. It's just kind of a gravel grass area. And uh, the pad will sort of provide a nice stable platform for that. So that isn't previously disturbed. That, that dumpster pad extension, that was my question. Cause yeah, no, it, it is. It's conditions. there now. It, it's it, located right here. The dumpster is there, but is it paved or growled or disturbed in some way? Yes, it's definitely it's on, disturbed. Yeah, yes, I I believe it's on a, a type of gravel. It's partially on the partially on the pavement. It's partially like a, a stone gravel mix. Yep. Okay. Then that other little section where there's proposed uh, parking yep. spots. That's kind of gravel, kind of grass now. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't really grow well there because it's. You know the large trees are there, so we're basically right on top of that. And th are these these are the areas you're sustaining as pervious pavers, or your what did you you said that they yeah. most of them are going to be. Yeah, 19 of the 25. So on this sheet here, the ones that are hatched. So the ones along here, here, and here. Um, the ADA parking is not, and then this section here is not because it's too close to the the foundation. Yeah, so can you talk about what, what is that going to look like then compared um, to the current conditions? <clears throat> right now, um, the service drive this year is paved. It's primarily this width. Um, so this will be a um, interlocking concrete type paver that's got uh, basically voids in it. Mm -hmm. It'll be on top of stone. Uh, so provide a, uh, a durable parking surface, but when it rains, it'll also allow uh, infiltration to occur. Um, if you get too much rain, um, it's graded so that it goes to a conventional uh, catch basin system um, and then into the detention system before outfall. So there's drainage <coughs> under the ground? There is, yeah. Or uh, um, under the ground? Yeah, there's like an under drain, so if it... it away, from, away from the... Yes. The yep. Or that drainage system that you have. Set Correct, up. yeah. So um, here, there's a dashed line that's an under drain. We head to this here. And then into the system, treated then out. Uh, it, there is a curve on it too, so it doesn't just go into the wetlands. It, it uh, it's directed towards the, the corner there, uh, where there's a the gutter. So you'll have to excavate to install that under that piping system underneath it. To yeah, they're pretty. It's pretty shallow. I would say a couple feet down. It doesn't have to go very deep. Uh, the location where the 
Uh, catch basin is, is outside the buffer. That would be the deeper location where you may, may be down. I don't know, six, eight feet, something like that. Okay. Was the number of additional spaces dictated by the planning board, or was that? Yeah. Um, the minimum requirements are, uh, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head here what it is, but uh, we basically meet the statutory requirement. We also proved that um, based on, let's see here. So parking is uh, one stall per 1,000 square foot of gross floor area. So we got 115. And uh, that's, that's what we needed. We also proved that uh, based on the, the um, historic and current residences, there's very over half of them don't drive. Right. Um, so, you know, really we put the minimum that they would allow and no more. And so do you, did they designate a stall depth? Yeah, it meets the, whatever the city's requirement is. Yes, I'm just, I'm just looking at this and saying that it looks like, I mean, I'm just, I'm wondering, you have, so you reduced, so they asked you to reduce the entrance from 24 to 22. Yep. But then your service drive goes back to 24. Yeah. And I'm just looking at our ordinance says that, um, that within 50 to 100 feet, you need to show that reasonable alternatives to post work or activity do not exist. I'm just wondering whether it would be possible to just by narrowing by narrowing a couple feet and making those last three stalls slightly shorter. Right? Certainly, my car is not 22 feet yeah. long. Yeah. Uh, so the city the city has an eight and a half by 18 foot right. stall. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. When you have head-in parking, you need a 24 foot aisle for people to back in and back out. So what they required us to do was anywhere <laughs> we didn't have that in this Y area to reduce it. Mm -hmm. uh, but where we do have the head-in parking. Um, you know, we need that space for folks to turn in and out. The other thing is that's already on top of graveled and disturbed areas that we're not really going any further <coughs> than we were before. Additionally, I thought you said that that was a mix of gravel and grass. It is. That edge. It yeah. is. I mean, it doesn't. But I mean, it was all filled when they really, when they built this building here. You know, there it was all disturbed. Let me just show you this <coughs> picture here. This is. Very similar to what was proposed in 2003, but never got built. So, um, I don't think we're have any more disturbance than we have there. We might even have less. But our ordinance changed significantly in 2007. Understood, but I'm just trying to. So previously, all this work had been in it, um, and there was work over here. None of this work happened, um, and then of course now we're we're outside there. But because that that work was never constructed, that's sort no. Of I'm just trying to make the point that you know it it, it uh, we it was approved, and we and we've we've we didn't come in with more. We've been able. But to the permit has expired, so it doesn't make. I understand. Sense. I'm just trying to make the point that. Effort was made to, to do that. Mm -hmm. On uh, the Route 9 side there, how far does the wetlands extend? They don't show a, an end to it. I mean, does it come right up to the edge of the road at the bottom of the slope or what? So um, the area where we re flag is in here. Yeah. Um, so this is the area kind of goes, kind of bisects the site underneath here. Is but the along the road, it must have an uh, edge, mm -hmm. the wetland edge along the uh, Route 9. Uh, five ten. Yeah, it's in the it's in these two. So here's the edge of the edge of five and ten here. Yeah, is that also the edge of the wetlands? The edge of the wetlands comes up to it at, at the point of the box culvert and then falls away. Then there's a, a an upper area in between, and then another wetland area to the north of that. Okay, I was curious because you have to do clearing. Yeah, the mass DOT permit, so <coughs> in the right of way. So, so are you actually going to be clearing some trees and brush to ruin the wetlands? No. No. Okay, because I didn't see a, no. a boundary along there, so I wasn't sure. No, the, uh, so the wetlands are to the west of the right of way. The uh, mass DOT asks us to clear. Okay. Right here, they put that by two minutes sidewalk all the way along here as part of that. So in areas over the several years from 2003 to now, it's grown in. So they're asking us to 
Okay, go that back. It would just be, I don't think there'd be really a lot of cutting. It would just be kind of limiting and trimming back so that you, the site distance here is, is enabled. Was this also figured in your um, area for buffer zone disturbance? Yes, it was. Clearing? Yep. Okay. Um, So we estimated about let's see this linear distance along here, right. about 1,800 square feet at the most. It really wouldn't be that. It'd be you know a tree here, you know a limb here, a tree there, some brush here. And narrowing the drive enabled you to pull the discharge point. Uh, back out of the 50 foot. Yes, uh, yes, sir. That sort of implies that uh, you couldn't have made it any steeper, I'm assuming, that that was the reason it had to extend out that far? Uh, yeah, well, we wanted to keep it flatter um, so that we didn't, um, you know, so that this was not erosive here. We do have a, a level spreader, but, uh, you know, we, we weren't able to go. Uh, it was basically from the grades and the width here. So, and, uh, is that piped until it gets to the riprap, or is? It yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And the drainage system is pretty shallow here, so it's it's sort of near the grades there. But. Other questions, comments from commissioners? Could you just describe to me? You said that if the if there was insufficient infiltration through the pervious pavers that it would be treated. Could you describe that, that basically just walk me along the edge of the parking area that are closest to the wetlands, so including the new, the new proposed spaces and as well the edge that would ex extend basically down behind the dumpster pad, the proposed dumpster pad. Is that so this here is just a would be a, just a concrete pad mm -hmm. and the pad is would be you know pitched towards this there's a catch basin here mm -hmm. um, I hear there's curbing on the back side of this and the grades are such that it, they grade down to the corner to the low point so here there's a curb between the parking and the further further wetland the wetlands in here so um, you know any drainage that comes off this road or in the parking space would have an opportunity to infiltrate in this area um, a larger storm say you know a, a one year or two year storm um, there's an under drain under there so beneath the pavement um, picture of where it might be Not sure I do, but okay. under drain is basically a piece of right. perforated pipe. The pipe's in the stone below. So if the amount of rain um, exceeds the amount of the gravel below to infiltrate, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a storage layer of stone. Once that storage layer of stone is, is filled, it can go into that, into that overflow pipe and into the drainage system itself. So I'm just looking at, like, at the scale. It looks like your curve extends to the west from that area of, of parking spaces. So it extends up, upward. Here? Yeah, so it looks like it extends up, or sort of around, partially around the bend. I'm just wondering now, between that dumpster pad to where are those new parking spaces, is that, is there any kind of curb there? Is there any kind of berm? Is there anything to, or is it just sheet flowing across that parking area into the, toward the wetland? Yeah, so from where your finger is. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a catch basin here, yep. and there's some curb here. Um, I'm not sure what shape it's in. I mean, I, I think they'd be amenable to replace it if you want, but there is a catch basin and a curb there. I mean, I guess it would make more sense if the idea is we're trying to treat, right, improve the treatment of the water before it flows in, that that would be one area where I could. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I think that there is a curb there. I'm just I'm not sure of the condition of it. Okay. But um, we certainly could, it, it makes sense to, to replace it. Seems it like you were doing the new pay, you know, sure. I think, you know, they're, they're trying not to, I think this was, was this repaved in 2003 there? It might have been. I think they're trying to keep what they can, but 
I think we could go along here and, and replace that. I mean, I guess the, the idea is that when you have when you when you don't have a curb and you have relatively flat areas, that yeah. through use tends yeah. to get pushed. It does. So yeah. since it's already past the hundred foot, mm -hmm. it would be good if it had some curbing there. Okay, basically, that's a hard, uh, hard curve would be. Yeah. yeah, I think that's well within our our ability to do certainly. Snow removal. Where are you going to put it? In those new parking areas. Um, the reason we ask is we don't want it traditionally dumped into the weapons. So yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, right now, um, they use the uh, areas in the corner here um, and these areas along here. Um, one of the things about opening this up a little bit, it does give us some space to, on either side here uh, to, to put that. They also have expensive, expansive areas in the back, and I, I believe they have. Uh, um, you know, they, they don't do it in-house. They have folks that come and, and do it. And I think this year you even had to move some yeah, of it off-site. Yeah, yeah, the bucket loaders had to come in this year. And just move it up. So when, they, when the edges there run out, they, you know, they have to bucket yeah. them and, and move them up, so. I guess it's a good thing that half the people don't drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other questions from the commissioners? Uh, only because we've had some issues with previous pavement not functioning as intended in other projects. Would you have any issues with a condition that required that if it's not working at the end of at the end of the project when you're coming in for a certificate of compliance that it would have to be revegetated at that point? Not to not be used for parking, but just to, to be revegetated in, in areas where it's within the buffer zone. Um, I don't see a problem with that. I guess I don't understand revegetated. You, are you worried about like it, so if the previous papers aren't working, if the pores are getting filled up and they're no longer functioning as intended, at that point you'd have to rip them up and make grass instead. Okay. And they could still be utilized as parking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, they make grass pavers too, but I, like I said, there's a lot of large trees here and they can't get grass to grow there now. I would say would it be even worse if you got cars continually backing in and out of it. I don't you know sometimes we do we do propose that grass type pave where instead of stone in the middle that you you know you vegetate it but you really need an open area that's got a lot of sun for that to work well. And it seems to me that uh, a year or two ago we had somebody who was using uh, permanent pervious pavers and there was a, a maintenance regimen that pretty much ensured that they were maintained, functionally maintained, uh, and it required some, I forget, they, they talked about a special tool and so forth that could go in the uh, gaps, in the voids, and yeah, pull um, it out. get all the compacted stuff out. I mean, one of the things we did too here is we didn't totally rely on that. We said, look, it's, you know, if, if all these voids clogged, it's, you know, it's not going to go in the wetlands. It's going to go into the uh, conventional drainage system. So, um, but, you know, duly noted, there is a, you know, we did do a uh, quite an extensive um, um, O and M plan that uh, the DPW had looked at and made suggestions on, on what to do. And they, they currently get the sweeping done now. So, um, what they'd want to do there is a good vacuum sweeping and then make sure that. Uh, you know any any of the stone there that's settled, or if you get any anything in there that could be uh, you know re replaced. Right, and, and as you described, the, the that whole parking area is canted toward the towards, towards the catch basin. Cool. Yeah, exactly. And then there's a curb. So. Other questions, comments from commissioners? If not, motion to close. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Sarah, it seems that your question about uh, could the outfall be moved has been addressed. Yes. I 
just a change from the staff report based on new information. Additional conditions I would suggest to suggest would be a complete staff plan set being provided just because of the new plans. Uh, converting the paper to they're no longer functioning. Uh, the, the curbing requirement that Downey mentioned and requiring provisions for preventive maintenance of the previous papers for the stormwater building. And uh, did you get that, Alita? <laughs> A lot of it once, but uh, and I would add uh, that uh, snow um, not be uh, plowed into uh, the buffer zone. But would those uh, would that have to go into operating maintenance plan? Ah, uh, that would be the best place for it. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think it's already in there actually that there'd be stored outside of buffer zones and. Uh, to be removed from the site needed, but you can. We should put that in there. Certainly put it in there if you need to. Yeah, as a condition, that makes sense. So, with those conditions. With the conditions. Second. Approval with conditions second. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you, yes. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good luck. 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 Exactly. Uh, no, I mean, uh, Grandy. Uh, uh, and we have any uh, staff issued permits or mail? To we do not. Um, we did get a copy of a, a DEP permit application for a water quality certificate for removal of the Upper Roberts Dam. Uh, I didn't bring it because it will be included in that. In this. Okay. No, if anybody is really interested in it's actually finally going to be removed. Yes. That, so that will be coming in. There goes the yard. This is right. It's the first time I've seen an otter that, I, at that place. Two weeks ago, I saw <laughs> a, a, an otter in the uh, Mill River, just, uh, uh, just by down, you know, right? That, that bed, the sharp bend just before the street. Uh, right there. Karen, I was just going to note this is not the first time that we have run exactly 180 degrees opposite the planning board when it comes to parking areas. Uh -huh. They are requiring people to put in an impervious surface, which decreases stormwater quality, which increases the tax on the people who are using the property. And, and I understand that they're trying to increase what I wish. I wish that there was some way that we could coordinate so that when they look at the map, they see the 100 foot and realize that putting stuff by saving what they want to save and putting it into our jurisdiction does not does not make our job easy. Since, especially since our since our ordinance says that you shouldn't go within hundred feet if there's any reasonable alternative. Right. And so the and, the, and the applicant can certainly say, well, well there there's no reasonable alternative because we are prohibited from exercising well, Though by another another well, another board. I think uh, permitting it would be possible for them to go back to the other body, but that involves the applicant getting bounced back and forth because they would say, "Oh, you know, Wetlands told us that, or you know, Comstock told us this, so now you need to reduce our number of spaces further or give us a variance from space depth." But I would, you know, then they say, "Well, no," and then they go back and forth. So okay. and it seems right. to be. We can well, somehow uh, other than that being an inevitable result of bureaucratic well, structures. But I mean, we did it before with when we had, um, a few years ago, when we had the Department of the you know, Board of Health with septic systems that they, they you know, said A OK to a septic, septic system plan that was completely in violation of the ordinance. And then we worked out an informal thing where they would basically give a heads up and say, what do you think? So I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's always going to happen to some extent, but it seems that if our ordinance has changed and we have applicants come in saying, well, this was okay back in 2003, but the ordinance is now more stringent, that there would be some way of 
some way of coordinating it. But it, it, it sort of implies that we're not the only um, city entity with responsibility for respecting an ordinance. Right. The, uh, the, they basically should also be respecting mm -hmm. the weapons ordinance. Yeah. Or at least the, I, I, mean, I just don't know what the level of <coughs> awareness is. I mean, I guess if we get to it first, then. <laughs> we should just ask that all applicants come to us first. So that we get to make everyone else a <laughs> And then they have then to. they <laughs> have to work around our, our ebook. Us and them. So, uh, Sarah, what do you think? Is there a, a, a vehicle or mechanism or precedent uh, of, of some kind of informal? I mean, it shouldn't be that informal. I mean, the, the ordinance is a standing set of rules that uh, we shouldn't be the only people who are informed well, about. The, the other thing, the other thing is that, and this has also gone on. It's a long standing that even though the authority for stormwater rests as part of the act with us. That stormwater always goes to Doug McDonald, mm -hmm. and we never. Right? Sometimes we're involved in the process on certain projects, but a lot of times we're not. And so again, the, for this applicant to come in and say, "We got the," you know, they think it's a done deal because they come in and say to us, "Well, we got," you know, it's been blessed by DPW, and if they had gone inside the 50, I would have voted against it and said, "No, you're not." Because that's protected zone, and you can't show me, you know, all the that you've met all the requirements. Um, I, I think that they would be. I think that abuses, you know, that abuses them in terms of the process mm -hmm. because they think they've got approval. But again, it's one of those things where it would be nice if even, you know, DPW recognized that when they see a stormwater structure that's inside 50 feet or inside 100 feet, they should probably they don't have to make a determination because it's not their power to do so. But at least they can say, oh, by the way. I mean, it's pretty easy. It's 50. It's 100. You're inside 50. That you should you should read the ordinance. <laughs> so, Sarah, do we even get copies of the stormwater maintenance? Plan? We do. So typically, what the conservation commission has done is let DPW do the technical review. We could do more of that if we wanted to. It's completely within our jurisdiction. I looked at it quickly. In this case, it was pretty straightforward and didn't really require a whole lot of review except for the location of it. A lot of but we can get as we can get as involved as we want to. So what I'm curious, what process. triggered them to pull it out of the fifty? Did they get feedback from people that it was uh, that it was not in compliance with the ordinance or was there another reason? They well, didn't no, it was only the it. it was the size of the driveway. But why did the, that why, the only why did the planning folks say they, you gotta narrow your driveway? I it seems pretty yeah. Maybe they yeah, maybe they, maybe they, maybe they did, did pick up did that it was protruding into the fifty. They were yeah. Or they we, just we, we did hear this. They just wanted to be prettier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't clear to me why they said narrow the driveway. To the 22. To, yeah. yeah, to bring back everything. And that just happened to be out of the 50. We done everything we could to move that outfall out of the 100 foot buffer zone. Not just out of the 50. Out of the 100, and also those other two projections out of there. So then you just come in with a Right. Clean with a no, yeah. not and a nose of the There's also an interest for applicants now not to have any extra impervious surface. So if the planning department says, well, right. you know, this is the minimum that your driveway needs to be, why do you have it this wide? If there's no compelling reason for them to have it that wide, then it makes sense to, to reduce it, which I believe is what happened in this case. How are these over width? Uh, the, the driveway, as initially proposed, was exceeded the minimum requirement. I mean, it was minimum length. I don't know if that was the minimum width or not. It was, I think it was a little wider than. Because you could narrow up the width and then by so doing, kind of. No, for the parking. Didn't they say that that was the minimum width for their it, the pull in parking? For head in, they said, head in, they said that was feet. how much they needed. Well, that's to back out. They didn't say how wide the actual space was. Right. Oh, yeah. They because said, if you narrow those up, then you. You yeah. bring that leading edge that's sticking into the buffer zone mm -hmm. and further out. Of the there might still there might be two spaces instead of three if you could narrow. Them. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Um, if I'm using my incredibly accurate thumb and pen scale, it looks like their spaces are ten feet wide. He said the minimum was eight and a half. So I mean again, it's but then the battle would be back and forth between you could say narrow them up and then. I'm, I'm thinking folks have enough experience with um, very senior drivers. Yeah. 
I do have experience with the memory units, and this is the livings, and you don't want to park We hope we hope they're not they're not the ones who are driving. We hope that it's their sons and daughters and family members who are coming for a visit. Not the case. Well, then they shouldn't have head-in parking. It should be angled. Well, then we're going to have cars in the buffer zone. Well, maybe we should have proposed a more robust fence, but probably bad grandpa goes parking. Well, alternative to us is just to say nothing within the 100 feet, or you could find another reasonable alternative and they'd have to redo their plans, right? Yes. They find another spot on the site to have those parking spots. But, but I think Danny's point is, that shouldn't, shouldn't the, uh, the planning folks, shouldn't the other city permitting entities um, have to be at least basically conversant with, if there's a wetland or a protected zone or a buffer zone, that they've got to at least say, well, time out, we, well, we've got to look into this. And that, and that definitely does happen. But by some extent, every land use permitting board is bound by <coughs> whatever the, the applicant decides to submit. Right. And we, we can advise them about all kinds of things. It doesn't mean that that would be reflected in the plans that they have to provide. I mean, it looks like on this particular plan, there was actually room between some of the parking areas on the other side Potentially, put, yeah. Put three year, three I mean, the, the, the hard thing is then looking at the plans to determine whether cutting down mature trees has a net negative effect on right. them. If they, if you push the spaces and then they cut down a couple twenty four inch oak trees, oh, yeah. it probably has a worse effect in the end on the wetlands. But it's um, well, it'd be better for the pavers, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'd be curious to see the performance of the pavers. Yeah. Well, I was just envisioning a scenario like the industrial park, right. where they eventually yeah, came back and said, "These don't work at all." Yeah, we just change it. Right. <laughs> that was that was Mickey, right? He did this whole report. Yeah. On right. Exactly how they failed. Um, did they want the same tank, though. Weren't they rubber or something? Yeah. Yeah. Those weren't intended to be plowed, and yeah. they they weren't envisioning uh, the type of use that they ended up getting. So the main mix was completely yeah, right. Right. Well, And it's also really this good. Plan plan you know, the vortex systems cleaning up the, the mm -hmm. water before it hits yeah. Yeah, the level yeah, of the gutter, the uh, underground retention areas. So they have some, they have some good ideas. A lot of, yeah. a lot of projects are going to, going to the uh, underground retention areas instead of the big grassy things. Right. right. Yeah, I'm curious how they perform in uh, frozen conditions here in the winter time. Because if there's furry, if there's, yeah, anyway, there's gonna, yeah. if it freezes up, I know my one, my one pipe in the winter time freezes up, and so anything that thaws in the spring just overland and piles up with ice. Well, I think the, uh, the underground retention is enough underground so it doesn't freeze that up. That should be. That's where but it the, yeah. comes I, out of the pipe at the end. The only thing about the underground is I'm, I'm curious as to you know when your detention basin is filled. Right, you look and you're like, oh, it's full of sediment. Now, usually, yeah. most most places in this town just means that you, you plant grass or put a swing set on it. But but when the underground stuff is full, unless somebody is actually monitoring whether you know whether or not a smaller storm is being captured, I'm wondering whether 10, 15 years from now, whether when they all stop working, how how to know? I mean, they have you know some of them you clearly have. Inspection ports, mm -hmm. right? But of course, those will get those will get buried and lost. Well, they also have the vortex, right? Manholes before the water gets into right. those areas, and if they, you know, regularly maintain those like they're supposed to, according <coughs> to their right. stormwater right. maintenance plan, so they, they, they should capture. It should That's part of the wrong. function of catch basins, yeah, is to catch, and then we can have a place to dig it out. But again, I've seen I've seen enough catch basins that are filled. Right. <laughs> that the deep sump is filled completely right. with sand and has been for clearly. Well, that's because years. the first time they, you know, on the city street, the first time they go to clean out one of these deep sumps, they bust the uh, the bell, yeah, which defeats the whole purpose. Or they don't clean it at all. Yeah, we don't have enough manpower on no. cleaning these. No. So we. Is there anything to be done, you know, stern letter to, or a nice letter to uh, uh, my counterpart in planning? Or I just think, I mean, I just think, uh, just a nice letter recognizing that we understand that they, right, have their requirements and that they also are trying to make the site, right, function ecologically by maintaining mature trees and obviously they try to 
push, you know, I think they're conscious of it. It's just that with something as clear as the 100 foot, where you would just have to say, or you know, the 50 foot, where you would just have to say no, um, or even 100 foot, where if there was a reasonable alternative, I think the reasonable alternative in, could be that you ask planning for some some variance, or you know, again, I could look on again as, as Mason was saying, I could look on this plan and say, ooh, do this, do this, do this, and here's where you get your four parking spaces, but then they'd probably have to go back to planning. Right. Having made but the then we're designing the project. Um, yeah. No, I yeah. Right. No. <laughs> maybe it's uh, be worth to sit down with the planning board and look at these four uh, yeah. joint meetings to, to discuss some uh, general conditions that apply to both commissions. Right. And yeah. this is this is all discussed preliminarily, but it is really up to the applicants to figure out how to address all the issues. And sometimes there's just a give and take. Well, we're going to take our chances with the conservation commission in right. this case, and mm -hmm. sometimes it goes the other way too. But there's a way around this. I mean, if we can come to an agreement with the planning board that you know, our concerns and their concerns. In well, this case, I think it, it probably, I'm almost positive it would have been possible to address both concerns and meet all of the ordinances completely, but this is just a little bit I mean, it sounded like from their, from their, what they presented to us, that planning had some discretion already, and exercised some discretion already in reducing the number of spaces based on the usage. So you would think if planning was also conscious of the fact that they couldn't fit, like they couldn't fit a 15 foot space, or, a, or what do you say, 22 foot space. I mean, not everybody drives, Steve's qualification to decide, not everybody drives a 22 foot boat to visit their grandparents. So, you know, if somebody has a 16 foot car, or 14 foot car, maybe maybe those spaces could have been slightly smaller. You could have a common I mean, Yeah, you can have. They have them in the city garage. I can't see it. If they're legal there, I can't see why they're not legal. Not besides the car, the vehicle. It's <laughs> how you use well, yeah, it. This means they'll get to the curb. This means they'll get to the curb faster. They'll slow down before they hit the tree in front. I mean, again, those are the, it just, I think that's just the, the vehicle consciousness. Five foot bumpers and all or something. Bushes. We should have required boulders. <laughs> just to protect boulders, from to protect all involved. Yeah. Decrepit and senile old people. Um, so it, I, right now it seems um, uh, you know, maybe who, who's who's my counterpart for planning? What? Who's the, who's the planning chair? I should have. Construction company guy. The sad news is they think the same of you. <laughs> <laughs> Oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a, a name that's synonymous. Well, Flake. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's the only reason. <laughs> anyway, whoever it is, whoever that. maybe I can <coughs> send a nice uh, email that, you know, when in doubt, um, recognizing that, oh, here's a plan that um, has a resource area um, in it that we could do some informal um, right. back and forth before they rule. And then um, some things may be clear and not need that, and some things might be, well, it pushes them there, and what about this? Or if, or if you even, you know, staff, you know, I think staff for planning is aware of, of wetlands ordinance. And if they, if they, yeah, I mean, so, if they could even give their rationale for why. I mean, that would be helpful for me sure. to know sure. that planning looked at the entire site and said, this is the only place that those parking spaces work. That, to me, would allow me to, to you know, when the applicant right. says, really, this is the only reasonable alternative, we've been told nothing else works, but we need these according to city ordinance, I can say, okay, oh, so now you've met the threshold of there's no other reasonable alternative. Um, so that it would just be helpful to have that sort of even to get the staff, you know, the staff report from planning yeah. that's attached to, you know, and there's not that many projects, it's only attached to projects, like you said, that are going to also fall. That have a All right, well, if we can find out who that person <laughs> is, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, draft such a communication. Um, anything else? Other business? Nothing else? No. You yeah. feeling better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't get the flow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn then. I guess so we're, when are, we, when are we up next? Uh, two weeks from today. It is regular two weeks, okay. Great.
Hopefully it'll actually turn into spring. Yeah. I at least have to go on.